All right, teammates, I'm excited to be able to come to you this week uh, with our Tuesday Agent Zoom training, uh, continuing with our Understanding Life Insurance series. Um, last week, we started with Primerica versus Everybody, but we're picking up where we left off uh, this week, uh, Primerica versus Everybody. What makes our life insurance program so much better and our philosophy about life is not just our product it's our philosophy about life insurance and our philosophy is buy term insurance and invest the difference what makes it so much better than other cash value programs that are out there when you hear the term cash value you it, it's really synonymous with trash value i'm not kidding because that's what that stuff is it's trash right and so what is what classifies as cash value life insurance well you know, you've heard it come by different names like whole life, universal life, um, variable universal life, index life. I always joke and say stole your life is in there, right? So you hear it called various names, right? And uh, we're going to talk about, you know, we last week we talked about whole life insurance and really how does whole life insurance work? And hopefully you guys got a lot out of that. I got a lot of feedback and comments from you guys about just how, you know, uh, you know how, how much you, you thought that training was very, very impactful. Uh, well, with this tonight, what we're going to do, we're going to tackle um, another nasty insurance program that is prevalent out there that you will run across from time to time. And that's universal life. And universal life has different forms. It's got universal life, variable, universal life, index life. They all pretty much work the same, guys. They all pretty much work the same. And so that universal life program, and then we're even going to talk about, <laughs> and, and this is one that it, it became popular kind of in, um, it was like maybe around 2000 and six, 2007, 2008, I don't really see it a lot now, but it's called the return of premium term policy, right? And so some of you guys know what I'm talking about. Where it's, it's, it's a so-called term policy that if you live to the end of the term, it will actually return. It says it will return the premiums that you pay. And they say, hey, this is a better term because, you know, the knock on term has been once you get to the end of the term, what happens? Do I get my money back? No, you don't. Well, with this term, they're claiming that, hey, if you get to the end of the term, you actually get your premiums back. I haven't seen it in a while, but I, I want to give you guys uh, the skinny on what that really is and how that works. So we'll talk about that one tonight as well. But before we start going forward, let's kind of take a step back. Let's do a quick recap on what we covered last week. Just not, you know, we're not going to go through everything, but just a couple of high points on, uh, on what we covered last week. Before I do this, I know you guys heard me talk about how um, trash value insurance is making a comeback and how uh, you do have these companies that have recruited younger agents and basically they, they train these younger agents to go out there in your community and try to rebrand and, 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 and sell this trash value stuff to a whole new generation of people. And so this was a person here in Houston, not going to name any names, but he's here in Houston to where he was on social media just posting these things about trash value insurance that was just plain, simple lies, right? And so he's talking about be your own bank, hashtag compound interest. Oh my gosh. Hashtag make your money work for you. Hashtag get your financial house in order. This is a message. I mean, he, he was just on a campaign, right? And we would see this stuff and be like, man, I just want to throw up. He said, if you needed to build $10,000, would you have to borrow? Now, if you needed $10,000, would you have to borrow it from the bank, the bank? Or could you get it from your own personal bank? Will you be able to buy your next vehicle cash? Well, trash value life insurance allows you to achieve this. See, this is a young person that is trying to sell an old product to a younger generation. But look how he's framing it. And I'm telling you, this was happening here in Houston. And there's a lot of people that are out there trying to reframe the conversation and what this crap really is to sell it to your niece, your nephew, your cousin, your brother, your sister, right? Your sorority sister, your fraternity brother, your church member. They are out there selling it to them like this. Trash value 
Liberty Insurance allows you to achieve this. My client saw a great deal on a truck, but didn't want to finance it through the bank. So he took $10,000 out of his cash value account and bought the truck. He doesn't have to worry about a car note now. His trash value account is still compounding at a, co a competitive interest rate. Oh my gosh, just at a competitive interest rate as if the 10,000 never left. Do you have the power over your money or does it have power over you? Let's schedule an appointment. Hashtag, this is where it gets really, really just slimy. Your term insurance can't do this. Hashtag, you can't do this with your life insurance at work. Do you guys see what I'm talking about? Can you see what I mean when I say, man, these people are out here just flat out lying about stuff, trying to convince people that to buy a whole life policy or some type of a universal life policy is the way to go. I mean, train, look, that agent worked for Snake Farm, right? <laughs> and training him to go out there through social media to try to capture your niece and your nephew and convince them that this is the type of life insurance product that they need to have. And I'm here to tell you, man, we're not going to stand for it. We're going to be trained. We're going to be equipped to be able to stop these people in their tracks because they need to be stopped. Or if it shows up in our family, we're going to be the ones that say, no, we're not going to allow that. This is how that really works. And we're going to be the ones that's that educational beacon that's going to lead people into the, uh, the right direction, all right? And so let's talk about some of the things we discussed last week. Just a quick recap, right? Um, did I do the recap? Okay, all right. So this is what we'll do. This is what we'll do. I have a, um, a video montage that I want to show you guys. Um, and this is some YouTube videos that I've kind of collected just different stories and different things about cash value life insurance that I believe is very, very powerful. And it talks about different types of life insurance that fall into that category. It, it, just, just sit back and watch. It's going to be about maybe 20 minutes or so. I promise you all of this stuff, each of these different stories that you're going to see, and they're taken from all over. Each of these stories are so powerful. Just, just check them out. And, and at the end, we'll, we'll talk about what kind of stood out to you the most, and um, and then we'll go from there. And so uh, what I'm going to do, hold on a second. Um, I'm going to, um, I'm going to share my screen. And uh, yeah. And then I'm going to share this. All right. And so, let me get to this. Hold on a second. Oh, let me stop my share real quick. All right, I'm coming to it. I got it. Make sure it's turned up good. All right. Is your child protected for the future? Gerber, the baby people you've known since you were a baby, offers you a way to help with that protection through their grow-up plan for children. It's a $5,000 cash value insurance program that costs less than 11 cents a day. At age 21, that protection doubles to $10,000 with no increase in premiums. So call now for your free information package. Call this toll-free number for free information about Gerber's Grow Up Plan. Call now. Right now, a video cue. Let's go to Catherine in Salt Lake City, Utah. Good evening, Susie. I'm married with two young children. Our financial advisor signed us up for a variable life insurance on my husband. We pay over $600 a month with a death benefit of $750,000. We've had it for six years and I've never felt comfortable about it and I'm wondering what we should do. What you should do, first of all, is get yourself a new financial advisor. <laughs> That's number one. You know, Miss 
Sorman here has a top 10 hate list of investments that she hates. And she hates them because they literally do absolutely nothing for you and they do everything, in my opinion, for the financial salesperson that sold them to you. And variable life, universal life, whole life insurance, that's probably on the top of Miss Orman here's top hate list. So. The only type of life insurance that you should have, in my opinion, is term insurance. Insurance that's good for a specific period, a term, usually until your youngest child is 23 years of age. $650 a month for $750,000 of insurance. Do you know with a 20-year level term policy, let's say you were in your 30s, you could do that for $50 a month not $650 a month, and then you could take that $600 and do what with it? Put it into a retirement account. Insurance was never meant to be a permanent need. It was only meant to be there during your younger years in case something happened before your assets built up. Here's what you need to do. I want you to get yourself a 20-year term insurance policy in place. Then cancel your other insurance. Never, ever, ever cancel insurance until the new one is in place. And like I said, get another financial advisor. All right. Oh, wait, there's more. Policy Genius lets you shop over 15 life insurance companies in one place. Now to an almost unthinkable question. Could your employer be betting on your life in order to profit from your death? This is essentially what some companies are doing by taking out life insurance policies on their employees. Our senior national correspondent, Claire Shipman, has more on this and we're going, huh? How can exactly. this be? Exactly. Life insurance policies on their employees, but who gets the money when they die? The employer. Robin, we were stunned when we saw this in Michael Moore's latest film. These schemes that really give your employer a reason to literally wish you were dead. But it's nothing personal, just about the bottom line. Hello, I'm Ed. Not so long ago, life insurance was pretty straightforward. You need life insurance protection most right now. Offering security to loved ones in a tough time. So when Irma Johnson learned her husband, Daniel, who died of brain cancer, had been insured for $1.5 million, that should have been at least a small comfort. Except she didn't get the money. His employer did. You didn't know about it? No. It's one of the most bizarre free market perversions Michael Moore highlights in his latest film, Capitalism, A Love Story, a corporate practice dubbed Dead Peasants Life Insurance. Companies secretly bet on employees' lives, expecting to make a buck when they die. Mike Myers, the attorney who's uncovered many of the cases and has helped angry relatives sue, says it's pervasive. Life insurance is traditionally used to guard yourself against the loss of a breadwinner, someone who's very important to you. This is used as an investment scheme. Meyer says dozens of blue chip companies have these policies, but only banks are forced to reveal them. Several have billions of dollars worth. We wondered why companies would even be interested. The driving force behind it is the tax deduction. That's right, a tax break. It was designed to let companies insure a few crucial executives, but savvy companies realize they could also get a tax break insuring a lot of lower level employees. It's a financial scheme that doesn't actually cost the employees anything, except some say their trust. Bettina Tillman felt shocked, deceived, when a Wall Street Journal reporter told her her brother, a music store cashier, was insured by his employer for $339,000 when he died, though he no longer even worked there. We were just in disbelief that they were able to do it and actually cash the policy or cash in on the policy. She sued and won. Now the government mandates companies get employee consent. Amogee Bank told us that Daniel Johnson gave his consent, but Irma Johnson says that's not true, and she's suing. Congressman Gene Green has been pushing for even tougher restrictions. Nobody's really being hurt, but it's so clearly creepy. Yeah. So, you know, how do you get at what, you know, what really is wrong with this? Well, we hope our laws are based on not only fairness, but uh, morals. 
and to me it's immoral for me to benefit from your death if I don't know you. Meanwhile, for those who feel wronged and were never told about the insurance, it's up to them to brave the court system. It was a matter of making sure that we did the right thing and that it was something that would honor our brother. We sent a message across to that, that company to let them know, you may have gotten away with it all these years, but not this time. Mm. Not this time. And Claire, I don't know if you want to know, but how can you find out if your employer has taken a life insurance policy? I know. This is one of the problems. It's not easy to find out because until 2006, there was no federal requirement for companies to let their employees know. Now they are required to let them know. But again, the documentation is very hard to come by. And I think until that tax break is gone, companies are going to keep doing it. Like I said, nothing illegal, but you said it, but creepy. creepy. It's just uh, the word of the day. Yeah, it is creepy. the word of the day. We've heard that a time or two. <laughs> Have a good weekend, Claire. Thanks. Thank you so much. We would love to know what you think about this, so go to our website at abcnews.com. Life insurance can be an important part of your financial planning. It is a way to provide protection for your family's future. There are different kinds of life insurance policies to choose from, and within policies, there can also be fine print that makes them very different. Pat Foran explains on tonight's Consumer Alert. Pat? Well, that's right, Ken and Michelle. A CTV viewer was shocked to find out that after paying into a life insurance plan for 27 years, his policy had lapsed. He says when he signed up in the 1980s, he was told his premiums would never go up, even though he never missed a payment payments, his policy has now been cancelled. I would like the policy that doesn't change during the term of my life. Angle Gonzalez says when his children were small in 1988, he got a universal life insurance policy. He was told by the agent he would pay $102 per month for $150,000 worth of coverage. He understood his payments would never go up, and eventually the policy would have a cash value. I thought my payments were going to stay the same for the rest of my life and actually that it was going to be paid in 10 years. Over 27 years, he paid $33,000 in premiums. In January of 2007, the plan had a cash value of over $8,000, and Gonzalez continued his monthly payments. But recently, he discovered his premiums had doubled and money was being taken from the cash portion of his policy until there was nothing left. So they were taking this money out of my cash value, and right now, uh, before I knew it, it was all gone. Gonzalez signed the original policy with NN Financial, which has been taken over by Transamerica Life Canada. When Gonzalez complained, the insurance company told him to speak to the original agent who sold him the insurance policy. 27 years later, the agent is now deceased. The company says it will sell him a new policy, but he may have to have a medical. His premiums will more than double, and they'll go up in the future. Gonzalez doesn't want to start over and feels he shouldn't have to. Even if I paid, it will be increasing my uh, life insurance on this policy every year. A spokesperson for Transamerica Life Canada told us, Transamerica is committed to helping our customers achieve peace of mind and financial security through various insurance protection solutions. This requires that coverage be maintained according to the terms and conditions of individual policies. Gonzalez says he wishes he would have put the $33,000 in the bank. He currently has no life insurance coverage. When signing up for life insurance, try to have a good understanding of all the conditions. Also consider term insurance, which does not have a savings component, but it's cheaper to buy. Premiums vary depending on your age. On your side, I'm Pat Foran. Let's go to Kelly in Missouri. You are on the Susie Orman Show. Hi, Susie. Hi, Kelly. What's up? Um, about 12 years ago, me and my husband purchased a universal life insurance policy for to help pay for my son who's going to college in two years. And I'm concerned about the amount that we contribute every month and if we're going to have enough for to pay for school. And also, was it a good investment since it's not an insured account? How long have you been watching the Susie Orman Show? A while. <laughs> a while, and how many times, how many times have you heard me say I hate universal life in the majority of the cases? Yes. A lot. Um, All right. Let's just let the numbers speak for themselves, girlfriend, okay? Oh. You put in how much per month? Um, total 463. 
a month? Yes. All right, so just let's say it's 400 a month. We'll make it easy for the math. That's $4,800 a year, correct? Yes. So over 10 years, that's $48,000. How long have you been doing this for? Um, probably about 12 years. So $58,000. Let's just say 60000 in there. You put 60000 in there. What is the cash value of the policy today? Not the accumulated value, the cash value when you start to withdraw it. About 40000 All right. Is that a good investment? You put in $60,000 and you're going to take it out. You have $40,000. You have lost $20,000. And really, that was you put in $60,000 with no interest whatsoever, so to speak. So was it a good investment? It was a horrific investment. I'm going to say this once. I'm going to say it for the rest of my life. Here's what you have to get insurance be insurance. Okay. Investments need to be investments. You should never combine the two. Ever, ever, right. ever. With that said, you are far better off at this point in time now taking the money, paying for your son's college education, and stopping the policy really at this point in time and taking that you know 460 some odd dollars a month every month and putting it right towards his college education now that he's older there's not a lot of catch up to be but that could have been at least probably a hundred thousand dollars if we had done it correctly just so you know i just have to address kelly's call that she just said for 12 years she's been putting money into this universal life insurance policy. Really, she should have eighty, dollars $100,000 in there, and she has, what, forty. dollars Here's what I want you to understand. Do you think when I sit here and I'm talking about how in most cases I don't like universal, variable, or whole life insurance that I'm not talking to you? I am talking to you, but you don't have to believe me. Just do me a favor. If you have one of those policies and you purchased one of those policies as an investment, it's a great way to invest your money as well as provide yourself with insurance. Don't take my word for it. Get out your paperwork. Look at how much money you have invested. And do me a favor. Go to one of those compound calculators that happen to be online. And start with, you put in $460 a month, and you did so every single month for 12 years, even at just 4%. What would that be? That'd be like $85,000. So do your own numbers, and then take a look at what your cash value is, not the accumulated value, because that means nothing. What would you get if you cashed it out? And you will see that you have probably 50% less than you should have had if you just invested that money at a simple 4% annual average rate of return, which isn't that great. People got it. So can you just really check it out and stop wasting money? Hey, Lindsay, we're... So has anybody actually started saving for college yet? No, oh, not me. No, no, you got time. <laughs> oh, no, we yeah. actually started. Yeah, but how did you even know where to start? Oh, I found out about the Gerber Life College Plan. Call now and get started with free information on the Gerber Life College Plan. Oh, it's a life insurance policy, too. Oh, that's different. It's uh, pretty much where I agree. No matter what happens, we get guaranteed safe growth. We've got to get started. spending money that you don't have even more. All right, checking in with the email bag. Tyler from Massachusetts writes, many people have a long-term need for life insurance. How can you recommend term to everyone? Don't you feel like you're giving them bad advice? Their term life insurance will likely expire when they need it most. Spoken like a great life insurance agent. Tyler, how long have you been selling life insurance? And those weren't questions. Those were passive-aggressive statements, weren't they, sir? So let's deal with it, though. Uh, I can easily uh, recommend term life insurance as the only thing because the rest of it's garbage. It's a ripoff. Uh, you're much better off buying term insurance at about five cents on the dollar uh, for the same amount of insurance and investing the rest of your money. You'll end up with much more. Let's kind of follow this through for a second. You'll see what I'm talking about. Let's say I'm talking to a 32-year-old who has a four-year-old and a two-year-old. Let's visit him 20 years from now when his 20-year level term that I recommend expires. 
That would make him 52. He would have a 24-year-old and a 22-year-old. They should, hypothetically, both be out of college, both be grown, gone, out of the picture, no longer a liability. The kids are grown and gone at 52 for that 32-year-old 20 years from today. Let's see. His house would be paid for because you never heard Dave Ramsey ever recommend a mortgage more than 15 years. So in 20 years, he will have been debt-free for five years, house and everything. Hmm, something to think about. Now, let's see. Would he have anything in his 401k? Well, if he's been investing what I teach, 15% of his income until he was debt-free, and after that, loading up on everything, if he made an average household income in America of $40,000, what would he have 20 years later? Well, he'd have somewhere between five and $700,000 in his mutual funds. Now, let's see. He's 52 years old. The kids are grown and gone. The house is paid for. There's $700,000 in mutual funds. He dies with no life insurance. See, mom's got... His wife's got no kids, no mortgage, and $700,000. I think she could struggle through, Tyler. That's how I recommend term insurance, because I recommend doing a financial plan called getting out of debt and investing along with the idea that your term insurance is going to expire. And then if you want to keep some term insurance and you're healthy, you may choose to do it. I have absolutely no financial need for term life insurance. A little bit for, for some estate planning things that we're doing, but very minor. The term life insurance I have is very simple. It's so cheap at 47 years old in the great condition that I'm in, haha, and I don't smoke and I don't do all these crazy things like jump out of airplanes, so I can get term insurance for nothing. And it's so cheap, I keep several million dollars on me extra, just SWI. Sharon wants it. <laughs> She'd rather have that than another thing on her finger, you know? All right, we'll be right back with more of your emails. And well, she knew her husband was dying. Of course, that was hard enough. Now the widow of a longtime Plano teacher is dealing with an insurance headache that started with a miscommunication and 11 days. Channel 8's Steve Stoller explains. He loves teaching those kids. Robert Williams taught math at Plano West Senior High and coached the hockey club there, too. Last summer, he was diagnosed with stage 4 lung cancer and underwent chemotherapy. Though weak, he went to teach on the first day of school. It didn't go well. He said he wasn't able to keep up. Sometimes the kids would ask him questions and he'd have to think about it. Williams took sick time. His wife says he went to the district's human resources department to make sure there were no issues with his life insurance policy because the district had just changed companies. They said, look, you signed up on time. You're paying your premium. Everything's fine. Go home. Get well. Two weeks later, Williams died. Susan Williams filed a claim to collect on his insurance policy, but it was denied. The policy required the longtime teacher to work one day, September 1st, or any day after September 1st. Robert Williams was there August 21st, 11 days too early. Had they had told him that he had to work one day, he would have gone in and worked a day because then his policy would have been in effect and he wouldn't have had any problems. Susan Williams says her husband went to his grave thinking his family would be taken care of. They have a son with special needs. It hurts. And if they have done it to my husband, don't think for one minute they're not going to do it to some other teacher that, you know, works forever in the school district and then something happens. Plano ISD Superintendent Richard Matkin sent us a written statement late this afternoon. District leaders say their old and new insurance carriers reviewed the Williams claim along with an independent reviewer. But the outcome did not change. So the Williams still cannot collect on the quarter million dollar life insurance policy. Live in Frisco, Steve Stoller, Channel 8 News. And you think it's a game! You think it's a game? Oh my goodness. I'm telling you guys. All right. This last thing that I'm going to show you all is an extremely powerful piece. Uh, this is called the generational wealth play, right? And this is how you could literally use term life insurance to create generational wealth in your family. It's a very, very powerful concept. What I'm going to do is, is, is I'm going to show you this, and then we'll go into training. You got to see this last one. This is the last one, all right? And so uh, let me pull that up real quick.
policy genius lets you shop over 15 life insurance companies in one place. Focus on hitting your goals and Hold on, guys. This is it right here. Receiving some money too. Thank you for meeting with me again. Um, we already talked about the plan to get you out of debt. We already started that. We already talked about the college fund for your two beautiful children, your retirement plan off, and set up the emergency fund. What I'm going to show you now is how to protect everything we've done. All right. But I'm also going to show you also how to create, as you talked about, generational wealth. Are you guys big on generational wealth and making sure your kids do better than you? Absolutely. Great. So what I'm going to show you right now is what the insurance industry doesn't want you to know, right? Our company, we're not an insurance company. As a matter of fact, I'm your insurance agent's worst enemy because I'm going to show you how to beat the house, how to beat the insurance industry. Mm -hmm. The way you have to look at insurance, okay, is you have to look at it as though you're buying money, right? Uh, it's hard to think of something like that. When you buy a car, you buy a TV, you buy a refrigerator, you buy furniture, you buy a house, you know you're going to be going to the store, paying for something, and walking out with that item, am I correct? When you buy life insurance, you have to think of it the same exact way. You are buying money. You're paying the insurance company to take the ultimate risk, okay, of giving your family a bigger check than what you gave them. Okay? Now, the way they make their money is, is that they're betting that you're going to live a long time. And if you pay the monthly premium for a long time, then obviously they're thinking we'll make money on that 30, 40, 50 year premium. Right. But if you kill our bed prematurely or die prematurely, they end up losing. Okay. Well, I'm going to show you how to set up your children's children, okay, financially by using this tool, okay, to help gener create generational wealth. Fair enough? Yeah. All right, so watch. I'll use me as an example, okay? So, I have a term policy, and you can always do this best with term insurance. Mm -hmm. I believe in term insurance 100% of the time mm -hmm. because why you can get high value for low cost. Mm -hmm. So, I have a policy on me, value is $3 million. Mm -hmm. My wife, Patricia, has a policy of 1.5 million. So we bought 4.5 million dollars of money from our insurance carrier. Mm -hmm. Now we're gonna pay, because of our age, I got it when I was 40 years old, I'm paying $441 per month for 4.5 million. Mm -hmm. Now 441 a month times 12 is 5,200 a year. Now we don't live year by year, we don't live month by month, we don't live week by week, we live what? Day by day. Right. But we're gonna pay the premiums once a month, not every single day. Okay. So 441 a month for 4.5 million. Mm -hmm. Times 12 months is fifteen hundred dollars a year I'm gonna pay. Mm -hmm. Well, I have a 35 year contract with the insurance company. But they're not gonna raise my rates for 35 years. Now I can cancel them, mm -hmm. but they can't cancel me. Okay. All right, so it's in my favor. Mm -hmm. Well, if you take 5,200, my dad died at 72, my mother unfortunately died at 75. I bought this when I was 40. So being very honest with my wife and kids, yes. my life specs is somewhere in there. Right. All right, yeah. so I have a 35 year level plan. Mm -hmm. If I'm 40 years old, that'd be age 75, this will come up for renewal. Okay. So watch this, so 1500 a year, for 35 year agreement, mm -hmm. I'm gonna pay $182,000, mm -hmm. that's 185,000 in premiums over the course of 35 years. That's right. gonna go to insurance company, I'm not gonna get that ever back. Okay, that's right. their, how they make their money. Mm -hmm. But when I pass away, not if, they're mm -hmm. gonna give my children 4.5 million. Mm -hmm. And me and, my, and um, mom pass away. Mm -hmm. We just bought 4.5 million of money mm -hmm. for $185,000. dollars There's no investment you can get anywhere that where they guarantee you 4.5 yeah. million and you only put in 185,000. Wow. This is why the insurance companies don't want you to buy term insurance. Mm -hmm. Because you'll ask for more coverage and less premiums. Yeah. yeah, that works. Yeah. Now, my children receive a check for 4.5 million on the past of mom and dad. Mm -hmm. We have it set up where my two children, Gary and my daughter Kristen, will take that lump sum mm -hmm. and they won't blow it. Mm -hmm. If they just put that 4.5 million into a measly 5% interest bearing account, mm -hmm. it's going to pay them $225,000 a year in interest income. Wow. That's just the interest <laughs> without touching the principal. But they're going to take the interest from that, because at that point they're married with kids, assuming that. They're going to take the interest from mom and dad's um, face amount policy, okay. and they're going to increase their policies to $10 million each. Okay. Mm -hmm. Okay? Now, mind you, they're not having to pay the premiums, because the interest from my policy is paying the premiums. Mm -hmm. See how that works? Yeah. So Gary gets $10 million, my daughter gets $10 million. Mm -hmm. When they pass away, because that's one thing is for certain, right. 
years later, mm -hmm. their children are going to inherit twenty million. Wow. See how that works? <laughs> and if their kids take the twenty million mm -hmm. and don't blow it mm -hmm. and just put it in a little measly five percent interest bearing account, mm -hmm. the interest from that will pay them a million dollars a year in interest income, eighty-three wow. grand a month. They take that money and they insure themselves. Mm -hmm. And three or four generations from my death, mm -hmm. I've created generational wealth where we could very well have children's children that are worth 100 million, 200 million, even a billionaire. That's the Kennedys, the Rockefellers, the DuPonts. Mm -hmm. Now, here's the trick. Yeah. Once you set this up, you don't want to ever let your policy lapse. Mm -hmm. I told my wife Patricia, okay, if we fall into financial hard times, Get rid of the cars, the house, everything, mm -hmm. but don't you let this policy out. So if you do, mm -hmm. the insurance company is going to keep the premiums mm -hmm. and not have to pay the claim. Mm -hmm. See how that works? Mm -hmm. Okay, so what we want to do now is set you guys up to have your children's children's children inherit generational wealth. Fair enough? Yes. Okay, so this makes make total sense? Yeah. Okay, yeah. This is why the insurance companies don't like our company, because we're not an insurance company. We're teaching people how to actually, by term, yeah. invest the rest. If you die too soon, your kids are taken care of. If you live a long term, you have a nest egg to live on. Yeah. See how that works? Yeah. Thank you so much. All right. So that gentleman is $2 million earner, senior national sales director in Primerica, Gary Cornegay. And he talks about, and he, and he speaks about it a lot, how to leverage term life insurance as a means of being able to create generational wealth. And so we all have that same opportunity, just like he talked about, and how you can set term insurance up to be able to not just leave a legacy for your family, but leave instructions to where the next generation, they can get more than more. And before you know it, man, you could literally have your family uh, go from where they are right now to be generationally just affluent and wealthy just by term life insurance alone. He didn't even touch on the investment side, just by term life insurance alone. So guys, it's a lot to be able to just kind of dive into. I just wanted to kind of set the stage with some of the stuff uh, there, but let's get into some of the things when it comes to uh, universal life coverage, right? So we heard about universal life in the videos. Hopefully you guys know that that stuff ain't worth the paper that it's printed on or anything like that. Uh, but let's talk about how does universal life insurance work, right? And so this is how it works. You know, let's just say that a person has a monthly premium of $500,000. I'm sorry, $500. This is their monthly premium for the universal life policy. Well, what happens to that premium in a universal life policy? Follow me on this. Because the premium just does not go to pay for the life insurance. It goes towards a few different things. One part does go towards the life insurance, but the life insurance portion of a universal life policy is what's called an annual renewable term policy. What does that mean? That means that the cost of insurance in a universal life policy actually goes up every year. The cost of the insurance portion in a universal life policy goes up every year. Now, they don't tell you this, because they tell you, hey, you pay this one premium, in this case, of $500 a month, your premium will never increase, but that's not true. Because in a universal life policy, the insurance portion is an annual renewable term where every year, as you get older, the cost to insure you goes up, so that cost goes up every year. This client never knows it. Cost goes up every year. Now, there's a third bucket that this money goes into, and that is the miscellaneous fees, right? There's policy fees, there's administrative fees, there's surrender charges, all kind of stuff that's associated with this type of policy. It's a bunch of BS. And then the third bucket is the savings account, right? Or the, the, the investment account or however they want to frame it. You know, it, it's the savings portion of the policy. Well, the way that it works is that it initially increases and there's surrender charges that get tacked on that. If you want to get access to that money, they're going to subtract out these whack surrender charges to the client uh, towards their cash value. Well, the way that it works, you initially build up the savings, but later on in the policy, as the client continues to get older, the savings account will actually decrease and go down to nothing. Well, Nick, what are you talking about? 
This is how a universal life policy works. See, what happens is, is that as the cost to insure this client goes up, sooner or later, the policy is going to reach a break-even point where the cost to insure this client exceeds what the client is paying per month. They will never tell the client this because what they start doing is that when the cost to insure this client is more than what they're paying per month, they just start taking the difference from the cash value. And that's when the cash value starts going down. And then what happens is, is that once they drain all of the client's savings from the cash value, they are gonna send this client a nice letter saying, listen, um, your new life insurance premium is now $2,000. And they're gonna be like, what is going on? I thought my premium was still never gonna change. Well, your cost of insurance has been going up. What do you mean? I've been paying the same thing. No, it's going up. And so what we've been doing is for years, we've taken the money from your cash value to offset the cost of your insurance so now if you want to continue this coverage, you got to pay a much higher premium. The client's going to say, I don't want to do that. Just give me the rest of my cash value and I'll cancel the policy. Sir or ma'am, you no longer have any cash value because that's where we took the difference in your premium from to pay your premiums all these years. That whole situation that you saw in that video of that man that was in Canada and he had that Transamerica policy, that's exactly what happened to him. To where he got that $150,000 universal life policy. They told him his premiums will never go up. Well, as he got older in that coverage for the 20 plus years, the cost of insurance was going up. He was still paying that same premium every month. But once it got to a place, they showed it. They said, hey, at one point, his cash value was over $8,300. But once the insurance cost exceeded what he was paying every month, they drained his cash value, then sent him that letter that caught him totally off guard. And that's when he found out that he no longer has any life insurance because he wasn't gonna pay that high, high premium and he no longer had any cash value. So universal life policies do what we call implode. They are designed to implode, right? And so let's look at some examples of the universal life policy. Let's talk about them a little bit more. This is what to look for in a universal life policy. If you ever have the opportunity to go through a universal life policy with a client, what are you looking for? Well, you're looking for the issue date of the policy. This is just basic stuff. You're looking for who's insured on the policy. These are the same things that you look for in any policy, right? Whether it's whole life or there's a term policy, you're looking for these things. You're looking for the coverage amount or the face amount of the coverage. You're looking for what are they paying each month for the policy. You're looking for, this is where it gets interesting. This right here is unique to a universal life policy. You're looking for what is this client's death benefit option? Listen to me. Universal life policies have a death benefit option. It's either going to be option one or option two. It's either going to be option one or option two. Some policies might call it option A or option B. They're all the same. You have two death benefit options. Nick, what's the difference between the death benefit options? I'm going to tell you. Death benefit option one, which is what probably 95% of the people have that have a universal life policy, death benefit option one basically says when the client passes away, the insurance company will only pay out the face amount of the policy, the coverage amount of the policy. They will not pay out the cash value to the, to the client's family, to the beneficiaries. That's what death benefit option one is. That when the person dies that has the policy, the policy will pay out the coverage amount and not the cash value. Most people who have a universal life policy don't even know that they have different death benefit options in the policy. Because when you ask them what death benefit option do you have, you have option one, option two, or it might be called option A, option B, they will literally look at you and say, what are you talking about? I don't know. I'll tell you why. Because they've been sold 95% death benefit option one. Because death benefit option two is too expensive. It's too expensive. Because death benefit option two 
says that if the client passes away, the policy will pay the coverage amount, the face amount, and it will pay the cash value. So you would get both. The problem is it's too expensive. So the agent who sold the policy is putting them in death benefit option one because it's going to be more affordable, even though it's still going to be high. Still going to be high, but that's going to be the more affordable option. And the agent will never really go through the whole rigmarole of even explaining this stuff to the client. Because if they explained it to the client, it would not make sense to them to buy that type of product. So you're looking for what is the death benefit option in this policy? Is it death benefit option one, death benefit option two? I'm telling you right now, nine times out of 10, if you run across a universal life policy, they're going to have death benefit option one. In addition to that, look for the policy loan interest rate. Because this policy works just like a whole life policy. If they want access to the cash value, it's considered a policy loan, right? Which means that they have to pay that, uh, that, that money back with interest. Now, keep in mind, family, this is the client's money. This is their savings. This is their savings. And the insurance company is making them borrow their own money and pay the company, the insurance company, back interest on their own money. Makes no sense. Lord have mercy. Oh, and this is the nasty piece of it. Look for the surrender charge table. The surrender charge table. Universal life policies are the policies that have surrender charges with them. Whole life policies don't have surrender charges. It's only universal life, variable universal life, these index life policies that you'll come across because index life insurance is the more popular one now that's being sold, right? But they have surrender charges, which means that probably for the first seven, I've seen it go to 15 years of the policy, if the client even wants any of their cash value out, they have to pay the insurance company a surrender charge. And this ain't no $100, $200 surrender charge. These are thousands of dollars of surrender charges that a client will have to pay if they want to get their cash value out. Because this is their way of saying, we got you. You got a little cash value in there, you still can't get it. Because if you got $3,000 in cash value, but your surrender charge is $4,000, you ain't getting nothing. How the heck are you going to charge a surrender? Okay, you go to your bank. Listen to me, because I get kind of really, really hype about this. You go to your bank and you, and you put money into a savings account at your bank. Let, let's frame it this way. You put money into a savings account at your bank. Let's say that you got about a good, you mean you just saved that money in there for some years, but you got about a good probably $5,000 in there. You happy for yourself. When you go to take that $5,000 out, maybe you're going to take a trip, you're going to maybe do something for your parents, or whatever the case may be. If your bank stretched their mouth to tell you that, oh, you can't get access to all of this money because this type of savings account you set up, Anna, has a $4,000 surrender charge to it, which means that you only got access to $1,000 of your $5,000 that, that you put in there, man, it's going to be some smoke in the city. How in the world can they do that? They get away with it. That's what these nasty universal life policies, this is how they work. They have surrender charges. And so you're looking for the surrender charge table in this policy. You're looking for the cost of insurance table because this cost of insurance table shows how the, the, the life insurance portion of the policy is going to be going up every single year. It's in there in black and white. And then you're looking for, oh, this is an all important one, you're looking for the nice little note. It's just like a little maybe one liner. It's a nice little note in the policy that says your basically your policy is going to implode. It's just going to be a nice little just kind of little small print note, maybe at the bottom of one page and, uh, you know, all that type of stuff. It's just a nice little note. And they try to bury it in there. Oh, yeah, by the way, you know, there, there, there's a possibility this policy is going to implode later on. We just kind of put that out there so you just never know that nobody, uh, so you can never say nobody ever shared that with you. Even though the agent who sold you this will not tell you, 
But we, we at least buried it in the policy somewhere in the small print, black and white, that, oh, yeah, by the way, this policy is possibly going to implode later on, right? And they're going to say it in a way like, hey, it, it, it's probably a chance that the premiums that you're paying will not be sufficient to keep this policy in force. We just letting you know that just, just on the slick and slide. Now, you know, carry on with your day. It's going to be a nice little note that's buried in the policy, right? And so you're looking. You're going to look for that nice little note. So let's look at this policy right here. This is an example. So when you see a universal life policy, it'll never say universal life policy. It may say it, but most of the times it will not say universal life policy. Universal life policies go by this name. They will be called flexible premium adjustable life insurance policy. Flexible premium adjustable life. Flexible premium. So always remember that when you see flexible premium adjustable life insurance, all that is is a universal life policy. What kind of policy you got? I don't know, Janae. It's a flexible premium. Uh, it's a universal life policy. Whenever you see those words, flexible premium adjustable life, always remember universal life, all right? And so let's look at this policy. This is a client. They got this policy back in 2003, November 1st. Look at this coverage amount. They have 428000 in coverage, right? This is what they have. They got a nice little coverage amount, nice little face amount, right? Universal life policy. So let's look at for some of the things, right? And so th this is their, their face amount. We know what the issue date is. Look at this right here. Well, what, what's their premium? They're paying $6,000 a year. That's the plan premium. This is basically what they should be paying. They're a tobacco user, age 35 when they got it. What death benefit option do they have? Option one. They have death benefit option one. Okay. And so they're saying this is the minimum monthly premium that they should be paying for the first 15 years of the policy. It's about $351 a month is what they should be paying for $428,000. And then they're saying, hey, you know, you can pay $323. You can pay a little bit less, $323, but, you know, the minimum amount that you can pay that premium is about for five years. But you really need to be paying... $500 a month. You really need to be paying that. But they're telling you, hey, you can pay a smaller premium of $351 for the first 15 years. That'll probably be satisfactory. And then if you want to do a little bit less, $323, you just better do that for probably five years. Then you need to bump it up. Here's the nice little note. Y'all ain't, ain't saw it yet. Here it is. Here's the nice little note. It, and let's read it together. It is possible that coverage will end before the death of the insured, if either no premiums are paid after the initial premium or, listen to this, this is where it gets good, if the subsequent premiums are insufficient to continue coverage for the lifetime of the insured. That is the nice little note. They're basically telling you that your premiums are going to be going up. And at some point in this policy, what you're paying now, it will not be enough. And so if you cannot pay whatever that new amount is going to be, then we're going to cancel your coverage. That's what that nice little note says. That's what it is. And for a person that does not know about life insurance, which most clients don't, they will see that and not think anything of it. They're thinking like, well, I'm going to pay my premium. I should be all right. No, you won't. Let's go deeper. Right? So we got that. Death benefit option one. Death benefit depends on the death of the option as an effect on the insurance death. Okay, death benefit options and policy is shown here. Boom, boom. Death benefit option one. The death benefit is calculated as the date of death of the insured is greater, is the greater of the face amount or the minimum death benefit described below. Option two is the death benefit is calculated, blah, blah, blah. It is the face amount plus the account value. So death benefit option two gives the coverage amount and the cash value. Death benefit option one only gives the coverage amount or what we call the face amount. Client does not get both. And 90 plus percent of the people who have a universal life policy, they have been sold death benefit option one. Why? Because death benefit option two is too expensive. 
It's too expensive. All right. They don't even know death benefit option two is available. Agent doesn't talk about it. There it is, right? Most people in universal life, yep, has death benefit option one. All right, so this is the surrender charge table. Look at these surrender charges. What's the surrender charge in year one? $8,578. That's a surrender charge. In year two, it goes down to $8,000, then $74. This, that. So if you have any cash value in your policy that's less than these numbers, that means that if you wanted to just take your cash value out and, and, and cancel the policy, you will get absolutely nothing. Look at this. They have a 15-year surrender charge table on this policy, where in year 15, if you walked away with your cash value, they would still take $571 out of your money. They have the audacity to do this and get away with it. Look at this declared loan rate. Loan interest rate is 4.76%. How did that, you, know, you take money out there, you go, I mean, if you can take money out, that's if you got money beyond the surrender charge. Once you have money beyond the surrender charge, if you want to get access to it and borrow it, man, you're going to charge almost 5%. And look at these fees that are associated with this policy. Oh, my goodness. Surrender charges. But this is, this is where it gets interesting, family. Universal life premium on this policy is $500 a month. They got $428,000 in coverage. How do you calculate what their insurance cost is? Well, this is what they put in there. They put an insurance rates table. This is the cost of just the insurance portion of the universal life policy per thousand. So they have $428,000. So this is what they do. In year one, the insurance portion of the policy, even though they're paying $500 a month, the insurance portion of the policy is only $138 a month, right? That's the insurance portion. But then it goes up. By year five, you see how it's going up? The insurance portion then went up to $195,000. Client don't know that it's going up because they've been told that their premiums will never go up. Just keep paying your $500 a month, and you're going to have $428,000 in life insurance coverage for the rest of your life. And this is happening to them right under their nose. I got to stop right here. Can you guys see everything that I got up on the screen? Give me a thumbs up if you can see this stuff. Right? I just want to make sure that y'all are locked in on this because this is about to really get good. Check this out. In year 10, oh my goodness, the life insurance coverage cost has gone up to $306. Year 11, 329. Year 12, 354. By year 15, the coverage cost, the life insurance cost, is at 435. Remember, they're only paying 500 a month. Oh, uh, there it is. That's the break even. At year 17, the cost of the insurance has finally exceeded what they're paying per month. Now the cost of insurance is at $501 a month. Client doesn't know it. By year 20, it's already skyrocketed to 627. Where are they taking that difference in money from? From the client's cash value, from the savings. Client doesn't know it. By year 25, it's at 958. And I'm telling you right now, <laughs> this client is going to get a nice little letter a nice letter by the time they reach about age 60, 65, telling them, uh, yeah, we need you to pay this higher premium. This higher premium is going to be about $1,500. They used to pay $500 a month. It's going to be about $2,000 a month. This is what we need from you to keep this insurance in force. They're going to say, I can't pay that. Just give me my cash value. You don't have any cash value. It's gone. It's a cold game, y'all. But this is what's being sold to us in our community. This is what's being sold to us. Let's keep it moving. All right, let's talk about this one right here, return of premium term, right? You might not run across this a lot because it, it kind of became popular in the early 2000s, then it faded out. Uh, but you may run across it every now and then. I just met with a client yesterday, and they mentioned that they had one of these policies. I was like, man, I haven't 
I didn't even think they were still around, but they said they've had it, a return of premium term policy, right? So let's talk about it. What is a return of premium term policy? It is the so-called new and improved term insurance, a term insurance policy that promises the client to return all their premiums if they live to the end of their term. I'm telling you right now, man, if somebody told you that and you ain't know nothing about a life insurance, you'll be like, hey, man, that, that don't sound bad. That sounds like a good deal, right? Hmm. Let's get to it. In reality, the client has not refunded all of their premiums, but they do get back roughly about 75% of the premiums that they paid, about 75%. The insurance company keeps the other 25%. The return of premium policy is really a cash value policy in disguise. See, it's in disguise. They call it a, a, a return of premium policy, but it's not that. It's really a cash value policy in disguise. Let me tell y'all something, man. In the way that certain political parties try to suppress the vote and all that type of stuff and try to concoct all of these different schemes to try to keep people from voting and stuff like that because they know that, you know, if people really understood and harnessed that power that, I mean, it would be a reckoning that happens. It is the same way in the insurance industry. If they understood that people, if really understood what they're selling and what they're, what they're offering them, that they would like run, not walk away from this crap. So what they do is that they, they disguise it. They, they, they frame it as this. They call it a different name. They, they say that you can do this. All is a way to try to manipulate and dupe the people that they're actually selling it to and take advantage of them. So a return of premium term policy is really a cash value policy in disguise. So let's talk about how it works. Let's say that you have a person, they're paying $250 a month for their return of premium term policy, right? And this is the cost of insurance portion, right? Let's say that the cost of insurance is gonna stay the same for 20 years. Let's say this is a 48 year old female. She has a 20 year return of premium term policy and she's paying 250 a month. She's a non-tobacco uh, rate class, all that good stuff, right? So the return of premium account is designed to be 50% of the face amount when the client turns uh, oh, no, 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 no. Hold on a second. Uh, okay, no, this is what I need right here. All right, so scratch that. This is what really what I need. That slide got put in there some other way. All right, so this is a 20-year term, 48-year-old, non-tobacco. They got $150,000 in coverage. This is what it is, right? So cost of insurance is going to stay the same for those 20 years. Got that. The cash value, a.k.a. the return of premium account, this is what it is. is that they call it the return of premium account is designed to be roughly 75% of the total premiums paid at the end of the term. The return of premium account is designed to be roughly about 75% of the total premiums paid. But then you have the policy expenses, and this is going to be the insurance company. This is going to, they're going to keep roughly 25% of those total premiums. Hopefully everybody's got this. But this is how it works. So the cost of insurance over 20 years is going to be about 60000 60000 right? So of that 60,000, insurance company is going to keep 15,000 of that. And at the end of this 20 year term, if the client kept the policy, they're going to pay this client $45,000. And to the naked eye, that's like, hey man, that ain't bad, man. I mean, I, I live to the end of my term because that's one of the common questions that people have. Well, what happens at the end of my term? Do I get money back? And then we tell them, no, you, you, you don't get any money back. Well, somebody can come along and say, yes, you can get money back at the end of this term, right? But hopefully you guys are noticing something about this policy. Man, that sure is a lot of money for a daggum $150,000 20-year term. That's a lot of money, right? Of course it is. Because the only free cheese is in the mousetrap, right? The only free cheese is in the mousetrap. So let's really talk about how this thing works. What they don't know or what they don't tell the client is that there's no cash value for the first five years of this policy. Why? Because the insurance company is going to get theirs before they give the client theirs, right? So they're paying $250 a month, right? That's $3,000 a year that they're paying for this policy. The company has already done the math. They already know they're going to keep 25% of these premiums. So 
That comes out to 15,000. How long is it going to take for the client to pay this insurance company they 25%? It's going to take them five years. Because 25% of that total premium is 15,000. Listen to this. 250 a month for a year, that's $3,000 a year. So 3,000 goes into 15 five times. So this is going to take five years for this client to even start showing a cash value that's going to be returned, right? Because the insurance company is going to get their money off top. Before this client saves any money in their return of premium policy, insurance company is going to get theirs. Client has no access to the cash value. So this is actually worse than a, a whole life policy because he leaves in a whole life policy, even though you borrow in your own money, you, you at least have access to it. In a return of premium term policy, there is no access to the cash value while the client is alive. And then the company will only return the premium. Return of premium is only paid at the end of the term. Only paid at the end of the term. It is not paid when the client dies, or if the client dies, it is not paid. So it works exactly like a whole life policy, but with less benefits. They overcharge, under deliver. That's how a return of premium term policy, all it is is a whole life policy, a whack whole life policy in disguise. They're calling the term policy, but it's not that. And then the client gets no return of premiums if they die, right? And so let's compare the, uh, a couple of these policies. Let's do Primerica versus whole life insurance. Let's say somebody has a whole life policy and I know I'm up against the clock. I got five minutes or so. Watch this. Primerica versus whole life insurance. I'll buy term invested difference concept against whole life. Let's say you have a client. This is John. He's 28 years old. He has $150,000 in a whole life policy. He's paying $121 a month for that. Hopefully everybody sees this. By age 65, John will have probably about $75,000 in his cash value. Why? Because in all cash value policies, all whole life policies, no, not cash value, all whole life policies, the cash value is set up to be 50% of the coverage amount by the time the client turns age 65. Always remember that. The, the, the cash value is set up to be 50% of the face amount by the time the client turns age 65. So at age 65, in this example, John is going to have 75,000 because that's half of 150,000, right? Look at this. For that same, for that same $121 a month, John can get a 35-year level term, $300,000 in coverage with us for only $50 a month. Y'all ain't excited. Y'all not excited. He got double the coverage for a fraction of the money, $50 a month. So that leaves a difference of about $71. If John invested that $71 a month and he earns about an average 9% return until he turned age 63, he'll have a whopping $210,000 by the end of his term. Y'all not excited. Y'all not excited. Look at this. If he wanted to get to his money with the whole life policy, he got to borrow it and pay it back in interest. If he take any of his money out, it's going to lower his coverage amount. Then if he dies, whatever's in his cash value with the whole life policy, his family's not going to get it. You come over here to Primerica, buy a term, and if that's the difference, he can double his coverage for less money than with the savings invested in a separate investment vehicle. Let that ride. If he wants to get to this money, he can get to the money. It has no connection to his life insurance. And if he dies, his family will get both. Game, set, match. That's Primerica versus whole life insurance. Well, what about Primerica versus universal life? Let's use that example that we just showed. Mary has 428000 She's 35, paying 500 a month, right? What's her cash value going to be at age 65? Man, I don't know. She don't know either. <laughs> we don't know what's going on with this policy. We don't know. Well, check this out. For that same $500 a month, we 
know that her policy going to implode at some point. So that's why we don't know what her cash value is. At this point, at 65, they're already taking money out the cash value. We don't know how much she got in there. Probably next to nothing. For that same $500 a month, has she got a policy with Primerica? She could have got <laughs> $750,000 in coverage on a 30-year level term. Come on, somebody. For only $244 a month. She could have got three quarters of a million dollars for $244 a month on a 30-year term. If she invested that difference of $256,000, still earning that average 9% return in 30 years, her money would have grown to $472,000. Which program would you choose? Game, set, match. Primerica is a superior philosophy. Buy term and invest the difference every single time, family. Every single time. Don't let nobody fool you. Well, this money going to be tax-free over here and not. Man, it's, look, smoke and mirrors, propaganda, in the, in your, whatever you want to call it. Lies. Oh, let's look at the return of premium. 20-year term, 150000 This Sandy, she's 48, non-tobacco, paying two fifty dollars a month, right? Return of premium at age 68, she's going to get 45000 back. Oh, do your thing, Sandy. Yeah, man, I got this return of premium term policy, man. Your policy don't give me no premiums back. Man, my agent told me that I'm going to get some money back at the end of my term, if I my term. I like that. Do you really? Well, check this out, Sandy. For the same two fifty a month, you could have got one hundred and fifty thousand with us on a twenty year level term for seventy three dollars a month, and then took that difference of one seventy seven and invested it over twenty years. At the end, of that, by the time you age sixty, you could have got one hundred and nineteen thousand. Which one is the better program? Which one is the better philosophy? America, by term and invest the difference, wins every single time. Every single time. I'm telling you now. And so what you're doing and what you're a part of is amazing. It's amazing. And so um, let me pull this up. All right. Does anybody have any questions? Anybody have any um, Thing that they want to add or share to anything that we've talked about so far? Anybody? Nick, this is Sean. I did have a quick question on something you presented earlier on. Um, the, for the life insurance that your company has on you, how do you find out about that? If they have that, do you have a right to know that information? I think you do. Um, yeah, I, I think that you, you need to probably start with your HR. Nick, based on the video you showed, it seemed like it was some legislation that was put in place to where employees do have a right to know if that is in place. So yeah, go to your HR or somebody because employees do have a right to know if insurance yep. is on them. I agree. Ask that question and say, hey, listen, um, I, I, I want to I learn about my life insurance policy that I have through you guys. And I want to know if you all um, have a policy out on me to where you're the beneficiary. Go to your HR and ask them that. And, and, and just see what kind of response that you get. Because they don't have too many people that come in and ask those questions. And so you may have to escalate it to a, a higher level. Um, but I would start inquiring about that and asking questions. And seeing if you can get a copy. This is a great exercise for everybody. If you have a job, go to your HR and ask for a copy of your life insurance policy from your job. Ask for it. Just say, hey, I know I have coverage to you guys. I got three times my salary or two times my salary, whatever the case may be. Can I get an actual physical copy of the policy to where I can look through it and look at the provisions and writers and how it works? Can you guys supply me a copy of that and see what your job tells you? It's a great exercise. If you get a policy, please let me know. But 
in my 15 plus years of doing this, I don't know anyone that has gotten a policy. I don't know anyone that has gotten a policy. Um, I don't know what your company will tell you. People have been told various things here and there and, and, and why they're not going to get a policy or why they can't provide that to you. Um, but try it. I, 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 and I'm not being, I'm not trying to be condescending or sarcastic. I really want you to try it because if you can get a copy of your job life insurance, not the certificate that shows you, I'm talking about an actual copy because you know what a life insurance policy looks like. It's a document. It's, it's, you can flip through it. It's got pages to it. All of the details. Get see if you can get that from your job because it's supposed to be a life insurance policy, right? It's a legally binding document. If it's the coverage that you have through your employee, you need to know how it works. Go to your HR and ask for it and see if you can get it. Go to it and see if you can get a copy of it. If you can't get a copy of it, please let us know. But I know many have tried, <laughs> many have tried, and many have failed to get it. And so, um. But that's a good homework exercise for you guys to go and see if you can get that. All right. Um, what else do I have? This is good information for you guys to know. Through Primerica, there is um, additional training that you can tap into if you log in to Primerica online. Under this tab right here, this training and development tab, if you click on that training and development link, it will take you to a screen that looks like this. Well, what you can do on the left-hand side, you can click on this life insurance link and this page will come up. And there's a lot of different resources in there that will help you learn more about life insurance and all that good stuff. In particular, this link right here that says in the know. If you click that, there's several videos inside of it that talk about term versus term, you know, the term versus whole life. Like it breaks it down um, it's good stuff in there. And then this one right here, Why Primerica Life at the Kitchen Table. You know, this is a guy, his name is Ian Pruckner. Um, he's a million dollar earner in the company. He's talking about, you know, just different ways to uh, explain or sell against other products that are out there. His style and strategy isn't necessarily one that I use. I think it's just good information to have, but you, these are just different resources. And then other stuff's out there too. It's just not a bad resource to you know, just kind of get yourself familiar with, but this is under the training and development tab, life insurance link, in the know, why primary at the kitchen table. You can also look at these other links as well. I mean, it's really, really good stuff, guys. All right. And so that is Primerica versus everybody. What we will do, what we will do is um, we're going to do another training um, on this and we're going to actually do some breakout rooms and we're going to actually look at real policies. We're going to get real policies, right? So we're going to do a breakout room. We're going to have a whole life policy room, a universal life policy room, and stuff like that. So you guys can actually, because I've collected policies from different clients and stuff like that to where we'll secure their identity so that that's not compromised. But you guys will be able to look at some actual policies and really test this information that I've been sharing with you guys, like what to look for in the policy and all that good stuff so you can become you know, better versed on that. So if you come across a situation where you have a client that they have coverage and it's the wrong type of coverage, you know how to go about the business of explaining those things to them and actually showing them where to go in their policy to look for this information that will expose the policy for what it really is, all right? So we'll do additional training with breakout rooms. Uh, shout out to Coach B. Walker for that. That was a suggestion that she made. And I was like, man, that's a phenomenal idea. And so we'll put that together um, on our next training that we have in a couple of weeks and all that good stuff. But any final questions or comments? Anybody? Hey, Nick, when are you going to have your YouTube up? Um, I'm working on it. Hey, by month in, going into November, I think I got enough information out there. I'll have some things up that will continue to add. But definitely um, by month in, we will have that information up and ready to rock and roll. All right? And I, I'm saying, man, there's some good stuff going on in the chat right now. Yep, it is being recorded this this. this this, this training and obviously, yeah, by, like, man, this is going to be a good one. You're going to want to listen to this one, watch it over and over again. Uh, I'm telling you right now, guys, this right here is what's happening in our community. Uh, look, your, your, your brother thinks he's smart. Your, 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 your best friend thinks that he's got it all figured out. I, I, 
finally got insurance. Man, man, my insurance agent sold me a universal life policy. He showed me an illustration. See, everybody that got a universal life policy, they always talk about this illustration that they've been showed or how their money just going to grow from $2 to a million dollars in 10 years. And they get them all excited about this illustration. That illustration is a bunch of lies. It's a bunch of lies. Hi. How are you going to have enough money to, to pay for your kids? I literally have had people, listen to this. I've had people tell me that, man, my insurance agent sold me this universal life policy or sold me this whole life policy and said, I'm going to have about $100,000 by the time my baby ready to go to college. I can use that money to pay for my baby's school. How much do you pay for a month for that? Well, I pay about $200 a month. And, uh, and then you start looking at it, you look at the cash value table, and you be like, by the time your child is 18, you're going to literally have $4,000 in here. What are you talking about? Like, I'm telling you right now, some of y'all got nieces and, 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 and sisters and siblings that got these girl-like policies on their kids thinking that they, you going to use it. Well, the, the, the face amount going to double by the time they turn 18 and the money and all that. And they thinking that these policies are going to pay for their kids' education. Lies, lies, lies. We got to go free our people, y'all. We got to go in there and turn the light on. Turn the light on. You're right, Coach B. Why they make it sound good? They make it sound good. She said she was almost a victim of a UIL. They make it sound good. Man, you can't lose money in this thing. And look at this illustration. You're going to pay $2 a month. And in 20 years, it's going to grow to a million dollars. And we'd be like, yeah, yeah. Sell me that. How much is it a month? Oh, it's $400 a month? How much coverage I get? Oh, man, don't worry about the coverage. Man, look at the money you're going to have. Yeah, sign me up for that. Agent getting paid and robbing you blind. Robbing you blind. Yep. Big shout out to Chris Jackson. After our last training, him and his sister, uh, Tam Jackson, discovered that he had a universal life policy. He had been sold, and we broke that thing down over the phone. And Chris got a chance to see it firsthand. You know, that man, it's not a game out here. This is real. This is real. And he was a victim of it. And some of you guys may have been victims of it. And some of you guys have family members that are victims of it. Who's going to help them? Who's going to help them? I, I, I just hope that you're the one to not just turn the blind eye and say, well, man, I mean, somebody will get around to him. No, it's you. You are the chosen one to go make a difference. Go get your license if you don't have your license. If you have your license, Let's go out there and let's preach the news to the poor and set the captives free, all right? And so I'm going to stop the training right here. Uh, hopefully you got something out of it. We'll pick it up in a couple of weeks and we'll start breaking down policies together, teammates.